Afternoon to all our colleagues in IT partnerships and key stakeholders from across Wales. Prynau'n dai chi gyd a draws Cymru a croesyn astudiaeth achos ni ar sut i ni fel y tri partneriaeth yn integreiddio gwybodaeth rhwng y brif ysgol ac ysgolion. Ac felly nid yn unig beth i'n wneud ond pas sialensen i'n wynebu fel rhan o'r broses i gadw a gwireiddi addysg ychwanol a thrawon yng Nghymru. I'm Dr Anna Bryant, the Director of Teacher Education and Professional Learning at Cardiff Partnership. Warm welcome to our case study today on the integration of knowledge between universities and schools. We're delighted to be working with the Throve and the OUIT partnerships, and each partnership will provide their individual introduction within, within this section. But today, from the Cardiff Partnership, we have myself, Sally Bethel, who is the University Tutor at Baselig School, representing the University, and it's been a real pleasure to work with Justin Clayton Jones, the IT coordinator and senior mentor, and Abby Chase, the research champion from Brasic School, who have really co-led this case study over the last couple of months. So moving forward. In the next hour, we will cover three illustrative examples, not only on how we integrate knowledge, what is working and going well, but equally and importantly, what has been challenging and how are we trying to address these challenges collectively? We therefore welcome a very honest and open discussion that stimulates many questions today. We really invite you to use the chat function as a reflection of your, of your thoughts and essentially as a live stream of your consciousness. Some of you would have hopefully have seen our pre-video where you would have heard from the student teacher voice of Alana Edon and what knowledge she felt that she needed as a student teacher and more broadly what knowledge student teachers bring to partnerships. Equally you would have heard from Justin and Abby from a school perspective and Sally from a university perspective on what knowledge they felt they brought and got from the partnership. At the end of this video we asked you all the question how can we integrate knowledge for the benefit of the partnership? So let us start today with this hook. Perhaps if we give you two minutes to write down in the chat or on paper your thoughts on this question that are particularly relevant to your context. So I'm gonna pause there and just give you an all, encourage you all just to write something in the chat function. I'll then hand over to Nia, who will hopefully pick up a couple of those ideas from the chat function itself. Nia, do we have some ideas coming in? Reading a few here, Anna. Um, so, I'm going to test in a sign of the academic and the sign of 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 the uh, mentors identified as research champions to coordinate research and inquiry work of student teachers and act as positive role models and a researching professional in school. Uh, Co-construction and inclusion of all voices. And uh, an important one here, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Diochnia, thank you very much. There's some really nice ideas coming through there in terms of getting the school to select some, the theme of a research assignment, the co-construction, many themes we've heard already today, but equally and importantly, some that will be exemplified in our case studies today and our illustrative examples. So in line with one of our, the key principles for all partnerships and to frame the case study today, we, the Cardiff Partnership, Athrova and OU, have co-constructed some principles that we believe represent our models on how we really try to integrate knowledge between university and schools. This process itself has been really meaning for us and has been a professional learning for us as partnerships because it's enabled us to learn more about each other's partnership and essentially has enabled us to have some critical discussions and it's really been a healthy part of that, of that to the discussion to keep IT reform on track in Wales. We anticipate that these principles are relevant to other partnerships as well and importantly, these are probably not the only principles, 
but are useful perhaps as a starting point to frame the discussion around the illustrative examples. So our overarching principle that we co-constructed was in the integration of knowledge, student teachers, schools and universities co-construct and collaborate to make sense of the changing relationship between theory and practice. This includes the student teachers drawing equally a knowledge, and I think that reference to the equal knowledge is really important from the school setting, universities, and in order for them ultimately to inform their own professional identity. Opportunities also for student teachers to have space to safely explore. That notion I think of, of safe space is really important so they can try out knowledge and really make sense of it within the university and school setting. We all felt that it was important that we, as a principal, adopt an evaluative and reflective approach. And finally, the need to have clearly defined roles within each partnership in order to help this integration of knowledge between the university and schools. So with these principles in mind, I will now pass you over to Justin, Abby and Sally, who will provide the first of the three illustrative examples on the integration of knowledge. Diochan Fawr, Justin. Thank you, Anna. Prinhan Bauer Pau. Um, my name is Justin Clayton Jones, and as Anna said, I'm senior mentor and IT coordinator at Base Leg School. And I know that Sally Bethel, our university tutor, is going to be helping me talking through this first section, which is all about our school led training days. Um, just to say a little bit about our, our school, a large lead partnership school in Newport. Um, we offer placements um, of up to 15 students in two placements a year, so 30 students on site. We uh, have a very large team of mentors and we're continually training new mentors. And I think we offer placements in pretty much every subject taught. There's only a couple that we don't uh, offer placements in. Um, our head teacher, Victoria Lamb, is also a member of the Cardiff Met Strategic Board, so we're very well represented there. And after I've spoken about school led training days, as Anna said, I'm going to hand over to Abby Chase, who's our research champion, to talk about our research informed model. OK, so to start off with, if I can just um, uh, start off with uh, talking a little bit about uh, our school led training days. Um, these are very like the um, days that Swansea mentioned earlier, the PAT days or PAT days. Um, and if I can just explain what they are, we have 15 days across the school year where all of our placement students spend the whole day with us. And obviously, as was mentioned earlier by Swansea, they might look at things like assessment for learning, differentiation, um, cross-curricular responsibility. So each day has a theme. Um, and this really allows us to get to know these students really, really well, both personally and professionally, and to integrate knowledge from both school and from university. I think Sally, you're going to come in here, aren't you? Sally there? Hello? Hi there, Sally. So, sorry. That's OK. <laughs> I think just referring back to what Anna said um, at the start about um, co-construction and collaboration, and it's been echoed across all the case studies so far, that was very much what we used to put the um, SLT day programme together. So the collaboration between lead partnership schools, which Bayesleg is one of, um, and university staff uh, who, who work on the IT programme. But slightly differently to Swansea, we use the pedagogical principles of the new curriculum for Wales to, to frame the um, school-led training days. So whereas the Swansea had sort of identified specific things, there will be crossover in what we do, but ours was a slightly different approach in that we use the, um, the framework, uh, the pedagogical principles to underpin those. Thank you, Justin. That's lovely. So um, obviously, when we when we put these days on, um, the days the days are recognised across schools as events that we all contribute to, which I know that was a, a theme of an earlier presentation as well. We very much see this as a really important part of our calendar. So all of our pupils, our teaching staff, our support staff all participate and the responsibility for the day is, is really viewed as a collective one within our ethos. Um, so full integration of our students into these days we see as a, as a really, really important um, aspect of what we put on. And it's a chance for, as I say, days allow for live action research on site in a, in a real context. 
can move on to the next slide, please. Okay, so uh, there's a lovely picture of uh, Sally and Abby in full flow at one of our school training, school led training days um, from last year when we were actually allowed to do them on site, which was uh, fantastic. Um, so as I say, um, what we one of the things we do ask all of our, our students to do is to part, we part, ask them to participate as members of our staff. Okay, so they dress, they act, they interact as teachers in all they do on all of these days. And we expect them to get fully involved in action research across a range of interactive activities. So doing learning walks, interviews with pupils, interviews with staff, and we've even had them doing break duty and observing that in the past. So the chance to, uh, to, to observe a day in the life of a school with whatever particular focus we have on the day is really, really invaluable. Okay, um, we want the days to allow them to see the school as a place where they can really explore and investigate theory and to challenge theory as well. So not only just seeing theory in practice, but actually to discuss and to debate and to challenge theory. Lovely. If we can move on to the next slide. Thank you. Okay. Um, just before we move on to challenges, I just wanted to say one final point, um, which is that in everything we do on our school led training days, we are careful to set up our activities so that we both model and debate good pedagogy. So we, we unpick the tasks that we do with the students and we continually ask them to consider how these might work or how they might fail according to how we set them up in the classroom set, uh, setting. So we, we deconstruct instructions, our wordings, we look at activities and we say, look at how we've set this up. Is this gonna work? Is this not gonna work? How can we do this better? So if we give you an example of that, whenever we have a discussion, so you see the photograph here, there's a discussion there with a member of staff and some student teachers. We ask them to establish rules for talk, which is something we would always do from an oracy point of view in the classroom. We would never just ask people to discuss. We would have clearly defined roles within a discussion. If we set a writing task for student teachers, we, um, we, we give them sentence stems. We talk to them about how this is good for your most able learners and those who really struggle with literacy. Um, so we, we, everything we do on school-led training days revolves around debates around pedagogy and refining pedagogy. Every task we ask them to do, we get them to think about how this will work in their own teaching. Okay, so we take this very metacognitive approach to setting up the school school-led training days. So just moving on to, um, and I know, I know Sally, uh, you've got another point to come in on there. Yes, I think we've gone forward a slide too many, so I don't think it really I have. matters. Don't, don't no, worry about it, that's okay. I think, you know, what we said was that the, the, this programme was planned and constructed, so we had these 15 days with all the materials sorted out. And having run the days through, um, I think Justin and Abby sort of thought that perhaps in their context, certain things would work better and they wanted to morph, to adapt, to refine their school-led training days. So there is scope for that sort of flexibility. And I think my role working with Bayesleg as their university tutor has really been to act as a sounding board for those changes to sort of say, you know, the learning outcomes are important, you know, that's, that's your primary focus. If you want to do things slightly differently in your school context, that is absolutely fine. Um, I think they've used me as a sounding board uh, initially because slightly unsure if that was okay. And now they are sort of just going, we're going to let you know that this is what we're going to do. So they've become much more empowered to take charge of these school-led training days. And they actually have some brilliant ideas, um, you know, which are something that is great because the, the program is developing and morphing and we need to share those back to uh, to other schools to see what they're doing and make sure that we continue to develop these school-led training days. I think Lovely. we're on the right slide now. We are. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Sally. So, yeah, I know you've seen this slide now for a, for a few minutes. I just wanted to talk to you really about some of the challenges. And um, I, I didn't want to just talk about COVID here because there were challenges prior to um, all of that happening in last year. So this was a, a massive departure for our school in putting these days on, as, it, as I know it has been for lots of schools. So a key challenge was really getting whole staff buy-in. Um, and getting whole staff to feel that this was an important part of the school calendar and, and our day-to-day -day business in school. And I think we've done this by emphasising the professional learning approach we take in school as reflective practitioners, that all of us are all responsible for our own and for each other's development. 
And to that end, what we've done is we've made sure that everybody's involved in these days and we don't have an A team for staff that get observed. Um, I think it's true in some settings um, that there will be teachers who always get they're, they're, they always get asked to have their lessons observed because you know they're perceived in a certain way we don't do that we ask everybody to be involved we don't cherry pick our brightest and best behaved pupils for student voice activity we give our student teachers a warts and all uh, experience of the provision on our site because that allows them to evaluate what's in front of them but it also feeds back into our own self-evaluation of where we need to improve so everybody's involved and everything can be evaluated by our student teachers we don't hide anything or sweep anything under the carpet we've got some absolutely outstanding practice going on in our school and we've got some areas that need to develop and none of that is off limits in our school-led training days um, Moving on to the challenges of school-led training days um, since the pandemic started, the big challenge has been obviously moving online. Um, and I think what we've done there is that we've mirrored our blended learning approach with our student teachers. So in the same way that on SLT days, we um, ask them to think metacognitively about the activities we're asking them to do and how these might work in the classroom. We've also asked them to work in the same way that our pupils would work online. So we've, had, we've, we've used Google Classroom and they've all got an online learning journal. So all the activities that we do and all their writing and their reflection and their planning that gets done on those days gets done on an online journal online learning journal that we can dip into live and we can watch them working um, and then they can then be transferred across into their professional learning passport so they've got ready-made evidence from the school-led training days that inform their discussions with mentors and their assessment in the future okay, so that allows them that digital record um, We've pretty much done everything we did face to face online. So we've managed lesson observations, we've managed group work, we've had interviews with teachers. I'd say the only thing we haven't cracked yet is pupil voice um, because pupils haven't been in school. So that from a safeguarding point of view would be almost impossible to set up on these days. But now we've got them back. We're planning to get them involved in our next SLT day, which is on the 15th of April. So we'll have our student teachers talking to our base leg pupils which we're really excited about. And I just want to finish by saying I'm really lucky to be in a school where I work with a partner with Abby, who is our pedagogy lead on delivering these days. And that, you know, the chance to facilitate adult professional learning is a huge privilege. And it's one which continually allows me to reflect on my own practice. So I say it's been a, a fabulous experience and I love doing these days. And it's lovely working with Cardiff Matt. Um, and I'm going to hand over now to Abby Chase. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you, Justin. Um, oh, just turn the volume down, Jess. Sorry. Amazing. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, so my name's Abby and I am the research champion at Bayesleg. Um, I know I'm biased, but I think the role of research champion is an incredibly exciting and important opportunity. Um, and it, it's one of, I think, the key strengths of the partnership model. Um, so research champions can be found in all of our lead partner schools and they're a carefully considered and uh, well-defined role taken up by various members of staff across the different lead schools in the partnership. Um, at Bayslegg, Justin and I are lucky enough to, to have that separation in our roles as well as being able to work really closely together. Um, but I know in other schools, um, some senior mentors also take on the role, role of research champion. It, it's all about identifying, I think, the 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 right member of staff for for, for that role um, so for me in my role as associate head for pedagogy and reflective practice it's a fantastic opportunity um, to develop our culture of inquiry as a school uh, to develop my own understanding and relationship with research and to play a significant role in developing our student teachers understanding and engagement with research so it's, it's a fantastic role that I really really enjoy um, and I think 
something that's been echoed in what Justin and, uh, Justin and Sally were saying earlier is that schools are allowed the flexibility in their allocation of roles, which is really important. You need the right people doing the right jobs and that flexibility uh, to double up on roles or separate roles is left to schools, which I think is, is really important. Um, so as research champion, my role is to guide and support our student teachers through their research assignments. Um, and I also play a role in guiding them in how to engage in action research to develop their practice whilst they're on placement with us. Um, one of my big jobs is to choose their research assignment focus. I think having that responsibility, again, it is a really exciting part of the partnership. Um, schools and research champions are allowed, again, the flexibility to choose a focus that matters to them. Um, the biggest challenge with that is getting it right. Um, it's got to be purposeful so that the assignment has impact and so that student teachers understand the importance of engaging in research in that way and it, it's important to choose something that is relevant for the school but also piques the interest and the uh, knowledge that student teachers bring into the partnership their pre-existing knowledge and experiences so you're you're kind of left of the the dilemma do I go really big and allow student teachers to specialize and um, that's what we do here at Bayslegs so this year their their research focus was attitudes to learning massive um, but it gave us lots to talk about and it allowed each student teacher to actually pursue something that was really interesting to them within their subject specialism uh, but I know other schools choose something really specific and then have a team of, of researchers out finding all sorts of different interesting ideas and, and reporting that back to the school so again the flexibility is really really important um, so once the, the focus is chosen as a school, then our responsibility is to provide a context for inquiry for student teachers. We give them that safe space to make sense of their developing knowledge and to access all of the knowledge that our school brings to access our pupils, our staff, our curriculum, our professional learning in order to make sense of their own uh, developing inquiries and the the best thing about this is that they are out researching alongside experienced members of staff within our team so in terms of building that culture of inquiry and uh, I suppose highlighting or re-highlighting the importance of research because that's a developing journey for us the impact of student teachers has been crucial and my role would involve uh, meetings with them, formal meetings to discuss and put into context their focus and then drop-ins for support and uh, general kind of motivation and, and uh, help along the way. Um, so, so that's the kind of role and that, that's the part they play. And we work really, really closely in collaboration with the University Link. So um, Sally's just going to talk a little bit about how that works. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, so Research Champions comes with different levels of experience and confidence, um, and therefore the university provides quite a lot of professional learning opportunities to develop them in their role. Uh, we have a university research lead who provides these regular meetings that Abby was talking about. Um, they're also a point of contact, that sort of uh, friendly, supportive um, person who, who you can go to when you need some additional help. Uh, research champions are given access to educational literature. They're also invited to be part of the IT PGC podcast, either as uh, sort of just attendees, but also as presenters. I think you're going to find Abby comes up in one of the podcasts in the near future. And we are also inviting people to be attendees or presenters at our regular research webinar series. So lots of professional opportunities for research champions to develop because we recognise that this is a new a new role um, and experience and confidence is, is variable between them. Thank you, Abby. That's great. Thank you, Sal. Um, 
yeah so as I've said it's it's a really fantastic role and once the students are kind of set up with their focus my job is is to support them in in their developing inquiries and then the biggest and best I think development we've made as a partnership is then what happens with that research I think um, everybody will uh, it'll resonate with everybody in older models of ITE that the research assignments often felt incredibly detached from school-based practice it, it almost felt like two separate things and we've wor worked really hard as a partnership to 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 really make that research relevant so once student teachers have finished their uh finished their research they are invited to feedback to uh feedback panels within schools um and they present their research as as is shown on the screen here in um infographics um that's been a really interesting development last year it was 2000 word written summaries which which were quite hard to access as a school i think the move to infographics has made that research much easier to share and um explore as a school team and we also invite um our university link to to um to those feedback sessions to to reflect on that as well so um i think we're just about running out of time so that's that's pretty much all on the research champion role um and i'm going to pass over now to Alison Evans and Kelly Gibson from the Athrova at UWTST, who will present to you one of the key features of their new ITE programme called Bridging. Thank you. Hello, thank you very much, Abby. Thanks for that. Uh, Bryn Handar, Pal, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kelly Gibson. Um, I've been seconded to the Athrova from one of its lead schools where I'm one of the 18 network leads for the partnership. Um, but my current role within the Athrova is to lead the bridging provision, which is one of our mechanisms through which we link theory and practice. Uh, and from this unique position, I hope to be able to share with you today um, the perspectives that I've gained about this exciting part of our ITE uh, programs. I'll hand you over for the slide that we're currently on um, to my colleague Alison Evans, who is the strategic lead for curriculum and pedagogy at the Athrova. Thank you, Prin Handel. So for the next little while, we're hoping to share with you the concept of our bridging model. And crucially, we want to um, present a critical evaluation of what the successes have been and the challenges we've faced. And thirdly, what we're going to end on is our vision for the future in terms of um, the evolving nature of bridging to further enhance our provision. So I'll hand you back, please, to Kelly. Next slide, please, Anna, if I may. Thank you so much. So bridging is integral to our vision within the Athrova to support student teachers it's been designed to allow them to engage with knowledge from both school and university settings and to critically reflect on these experiences in order to transform their own classroom practice and pedagogy. Um, throughout the accreditation uh, process and since the programmes have gone live, all elements of our bridging have been co-constructed between school and university uh, staff and they've been piloted, uh, they were piloted within our partnership. Um, I think it's really key to, to outline here that all stakeholders have a, have a distinct but very connected part to play within our bridging model. As you can see from the diagram that's in front of you, um, bridging involves uh, the student teacher, the practicing teacher and the university tutor in three phases of applied practice where each one is followed by a period of reflection. These phrases are, are adapted in accordance with the different contexts of each bridging experience, um, linking it to what other partnerships are doing. For example, we, we will have one bridge experience linked to assessment for learning. We look at critical incidents, et cetera. So during the meet phase of, of the cycle, this may happen in university, sometimes it's in school and it can even happen within the community. Student teachers are supported to research existing evidence-based approaches and use it to plan learning activities. 
Then during their test phase, they're given the opportunity to test the uh, theoretical approaches through applied classroom practice following the test period. Uh, so following the test period, they, they then engage in individual and group reflection. And then finally, during the share phase, ideas are formally shared in a professional conversation with their peers, with school staff and with university staff. During this share phase, student teachers are encouraged not only to critically evaluate their bridging experience, but also to have their assumptions challenged and the theory challenged, and to consider how this will impact on the next steps for their pedagogical change and development. Um, this cyclical engagement in bridging activities throughout the IT programme supports student teachers in undergoing the transformation that's required in the development of professional teacher, the professional teacher, and to prepare them to enter educational context as an informed and inquiring contributor. Thanks, Anna, if you could go on to the next slide. Thank you. So our bridging model then is all about close to practice research methodology. So um, we've adapted the work from Orchard and Winch and we have been able to um, identify four research dispositions that we'd like to um, permeate throughout the courses that, that we run both within our student body and also within our staff body as well. So really quickly, um, we want to develop sceptical professionals. So in, in terms of them understanding empirical evidence in a contested terrain. So not just blindly accepting something because it's been published, but we want to really instill um, a sense of being sceptical. We want to um, ensure that all our students and staff uh, are mindful of ethical considerations within the complex um, situations around social science research, particularly within the educational environment. We want to ensure that all our students are skilled in research as well, where they understand the principles of social science research and they can apply and evaluate it within their context as well. And finally, we want to really ensure that our students go into the profession as part of an inquiring profession, where they can fully contribute to the community of inquiring practitioners out there. So we want them to be asking questions and, you know, as I said, refusing to accept things just because they're out there. Next slide, please, Anna. Thank you, Alison. Um, so as the programme has gone from its pilot phase into the, the, the live um, process that it is currently in, we've sought regular feedback from all of its stakeholders, the student teachers, university staff and school staff. And through the, these processes, we've identified both successes and challenges that need to be considered going forward. Without doubt, the most positive responses from our stakeholders relate to experiences that involve the coming together of academic staff from university with the practicing teacher mentors and the student teachers around a common theme of pedagogic interest. Our partnership has de demonstrated a genuine desire and commitment to forge close to practice research into day-to-day -day practice and to constantly evaluate during professional discussions with the aim of transforming practice. Thank you, Anna, if you'd like to go on to the next slide. So an ongoing thing for us is a critical evaluation of bridging. That is, um, you know, a, a real focus for us all the time because we want to enhance provision. We want to see it evolve into the best it can be. So these are the things that we consider amongst the strengths of our provision at the moment. There is a genuine co-construction between university and school staff in planning the bridging events. So the university tutor would get together with um, the network lead and there would be no hierarchy we would genuinely co-construct um, what we want to achieve in the day around the theme that's been set resources and expertise from both institutions are shared 
equally unexploited. Um, so very often the schools, for instance, will get a member of staff with a particular responsibility to actively contribute to um, perhaps the meet day where students can benefit then from, from um, members of staff with that focus. Another strength is the opportunity for student teachers to make sense of theory in an authentic setting. So really building the links, strong links between theory and practice. Um, it was mentioned before, Anna mentioned before about students having a safe space um, to actively evaluate and reflect on things. So bridging is um, a very good mechanism for doing that. The PLP really um, benefits from the bridging experience because it provides explicit links that students then can use for their PLP going forward. And um, as I uh, explained before about the research dispositions at the Athrova, uh, the bridging opportunity really creates um, lots of, of opportunities for, for students to develop their research dispositions. And next slide, Dana, please. Thanks, Alison. So obviously with the successes, we, we have of course identified uh, aspects of bridging that are, have been challenging and, and areas that we'd like to further develop. Um, whilst many of our students regard bridging as an integral part of their training, and as an effective um, way for them to reflect upon their experiences and research in order to transform their practice. We are finding that some students are requiring additional support to develop and adopt these research positions. That's something that we are looking at as a priority going forward. Um, some school-based staff have expressed concerns with regards to having a lack of time to engage in readings around the pedagogy. Um, so to address this, we have uh, our module leads at the Athrova have provided one page reading summaries for our, uh, our school staff um, for each bridging experience. But obviously this has got much wider implications in terms of teacher workload going forward. Um, as a result of quality assurance work completed by our partnership during the school closures last summer, we made significant progress in terms of clarifying the roles of all stakeholders within bridging um, to ensure a more consistent approach. However, we, we are still um, intending to do further quality assurance measures to ensure that best practice is being shared and that the bridging provision is of the highest quality across all of our 18 networks. And obviously it's been mentioned before, the global pandemic has forced us to adapt our provision in order to ensure that it's not only meaningful, but it's also relevant. Um, and it also ensures the safety of our students, um, our, our student teachers, our staff, and obviously the learners within our partnership schools. Um, one thing I would say is that the rapid rate of response and the level of creativity and innovation by both schools and university staff to secure this aim has been both impressive and highly appreciated by our student teachers. Thank you, Anna. Next slide, please. So the priorities, um, we have arrived at these priorities um, from the constant feedback that we have from all stakeholders. And, um, you know, we, we've really sat down with our partner schools and discussed these. So the first priority really um, is to develop the role of the discussant to ensure all students' research positions are maximised. In other words, the discussant could be the university tutor, it could be um, a, a member of the the school staff but we really want to um, not we want to present and develop that role to present a, an element of challenge and an element of um, connecting um, maybe opposing viewpoints together in terms of the research and making those links between the research and their practice as well. 
um, we want to develop bridging more as a kind of integral, it is becoming an integral part of, of the course, but we want to have it um, as a more frequent opportunity and a more short term opportunity, again, to ensure that those frequent links are established between theory that they may meet in, in university and practice, so they are not devoid and seen as separate things. Um, meet test share is a um, embedded principle within all the courses that we run, but again, we want to embed that further to ensure that um, it, it permeates every aspect of, of our work um, within the Athrova as well. And quality assurance is a, is a real, real priority for us going forward. We've made huge strides in that because, um, as you can appreciate, with, with a number of schools and a number of networks, trying to ensure um, consistency there um, can be a challenge. But we have quality assurance mechanisms now that, that have really enhanced our provision. So we want to continue in that direction. Could we have the next slide, please, Anna? Um, well, we did want to pause for questions, but I, I know that those are going to be um, posted perhaps within the chat. But if we can go on to the next slide. These are just um, random quotations that we received from the feedback that we put out to staff delivering on bridging to schools and to students as well. Uh, we didn't cherry pick the best and glowing ones, um, but, but these are a, a kind of sense of the um, feedback that we did receive. Kelly, over to you. Thank you very much, Alison. So that's the end of our presentation. Thank you very much for listening. We will take questions um, at, the, at the appropriate time. But now we'd like to pass on to our colleagues from the Open University to discuss integration of theory and practice in their distance and blended model. So my name is Sarah Stewart and I'm the director of the PGC at the OU in Wales and I'm joined today by two of my colleagues. Uh, Jonathan Giridui, I'm the tutor curriculum Gwydronaeth and a brief scholar Godhead. Good afternoon, my name is Jonathan Giddy, I'm the secondary science curriculum tutor at the Open University. I'm Dan, I'm Cole Jones, I'm the tutor curriculum a Gymraeg a Raglen Tar a Brifysgol y Gored yng Nghymru. Heddiw, rydym am rannu enghreifftiau o sut rydym yn integreithio gwybodaeth amcaniaethol a gwybodaeth ar gyfer y marfer yn ein raglen gyfunol o bell. Mae'r dull dysgu o bell cyfunol a gynigir gan y raglen tar, ond gyrygu bod dysgu'n hygyrch gyda'r athrod yn hyfforddiant yn gynolbwynt i system dysgu hyblyg, lle mae mynediad at gyswllt wyneb yn wyneb ffurfiol ac anffurfiol ynghyd â chefnogaeth ar lein gan diwtoried, mentoried a chyfoedion. Mae strwythu'r cyffredinol y profiad dysgu y caiff yr athrawon dan hyfforddiant yn cynnwys darpariaeth prifysgol trwy ddeunithiau ar lein, seminarau ar lein a ffwr yma strwythu'r edig. Ochr yn ochr â hyn, mae athrawon dan hyfforddiant yn treulio amser yn yr ysgol yn cymryd rhan mewn ymarfer dysgu yn ystod cyfnodau ymarfer clinigol. Ar draws y ddau lwybr sydd gennym, Mae'r ffordd y mae hyn wedi strwythuro yn edrych ychydig yn wahanol. Mae cyfnodau ymarfer dysgu myfyrwyr cyflogedig wedi hymgorffori mewn strwythu'r sy'n seiledig ar gyflogaeth, tra bod myfyrwyr rhan amser yn cwblhau ymarfer dysgu ar sail pro rata, a hyn oll dros ddwy flynedd, gan symud ymlaen at y sleid nesaf a fynghydweithiwr Jonathan. So our model promotes an integrated approach to theory and practice, providing opportunities for student teachers to develop holistic, holistically within any, within any practice setting across the whole of Wales. This is achieved in a number of ways, which always places the student at its heart. Today we'll discuss the three elements of our programme that act as these bridging strategies between the different types of knowledge. These are our practice learning activities, our lesson study and our student learning e-forums. 
Practice learning activities are the flexible structure for students' school experience. These activities are designed to align with our online materials and subject study seminars, drawing together different types of knowledge through practical school-based activities. Uh, they support the student to contextualize their developing knowledge in the school-based setting across each module or level as they progress along a continuum of familiarization, consolidation, and then autonomy. They, use, they also ensure that student teachers have had a wide range of school experience to support their academic assessment and development towards QTS. They are mediated by the mentor and the school coordinator who facilitate the activities, ensuring that school knowledge and university knowledge is brought together within the, school's, the student's school context. However, these activities do not exist in a vacuum. They're aligned to our online core and professional materials and the online subject seminars and begin to lay the foundation for the problematizing of practice that students develop further through engaging in lesson study and in the second year a small-scale master's level inquiry project. Slade Nessa please Anna. Sy'n archwilio nifer y themau ac sydd hefyd yn darparu strwythur ar gyfer ein rhaglen ehangach. Caiff myfyrwyr adborth ffurfiannol rheoled gan ei mentor a'u cydlynydd ysgol yn ystod sesiynau mentora. Mae'r gweithgareddau mae'r ffydysgu hefyd yn darparu cydestyn ar gyfer sesiynau mentor y myfyrwyr, gan gefnogi dialog ffeirniadol yng nghylch y marfer dysgu a nodi bylchau mewn gwybodaeth a phrofiadau ymarfer y myfyrwyr. Yn y modd hwn, mae'r gweithgareddau marfer dysgu yn gweithredu fel rhan bwysig o lunio ddysgu personol yr athrod yn hyfforddiant. Trwy ddefnyddio'r gweithgaredd ym arfer dysgu fel cyfrwng er enghraifft, maent yn caniatau i fyfyrwyr gaffael gwahanol fathau o wybodaeth dros amser, ac yn rhoi cyfleoedd i fyfyrwyr gysylltu dysgu blaenorol a dealltwriaeth newydd. Mae cydblethu cynnwys ac addysgeg yn caniatau i'r athro greu ei wybodaeth bersonol wedi llunio'r wybodaeth ar gyfer ym arfer, ochrnochor ac wybodaeth mewn ymarfer ac wybodaeth am ymarfer sy'n creu sylfaen er mwyn datblygu addysgeg effeithiol gan symud ymlaen ys gwylch fy nda yna. Cysyllta'r gweithgareddau ymarfer dysgu a thrafodaethau ffwrwm strwythyredig y clywwch mwy amdanynt yn y man gan gynnig ffenestri pellach i fyd ymarfer eraill a darparu strwythyr cryf i gefnogi eich ymarfer myfyriol eich hun. Gwyliau'r enghraifft fan hyn lle mae angen cysylltiad cryf ar tiwtor blwyddyn er mwyn ymchwilio ymhellach i echyd a lles. Dyluniwyd y gweithgareddau ymarfer dysgu i fod yn rhai hunan gyfyriedig, felly does dim trefn benodol er mwyn eu cwblhau. Anogi'r myfyrwyr y Brifysgol y Gored ar draws pob cymhwyster i gymryd cyfrifoldeb am eu dysgu ac i nodi eu blaenoriaethu dysgu eu hunan. Our second example of bridging is the lesson study, which builds on practice learning activities through formalising a range of skills which are explored and developed in the practice learning activities. Our lesson study follows the Peter Dudley model, where students have the opportunity to reflect critically within a cycle of planning, learning and evaluating teaching and learning. For example, one lesson study cycle supports student teachers to deeply consider the ways they support specific groups of learners' achievement. All these stages are shared with the mentor as part of the process to inform each stage of planning, teaching and reflecting. Following the lessons, the mentor and student teacher work together to reflect on the cycle and to rehearse and refine aspects of the student teacher's practice. Further critical opportunities for reflection on lesson study also takes place within online seminars and our forums creating collaborative spaces for student teachers to explore intellectual and experiential knowledge. Lesson study lays the foundation for the problematizing of practice and the inquiry approaches which students will develop in the third module through small scale study at master's level. This further supports student teachers work to develop their personal teaching construct and to integrate pedagogical subject and assessment knowledge, which simply argues are interconnected and integrated. Slade Nessa, please. 
Our final example is the use of our e-forums as a formal learning space. OU forums are an integrated part of a sophisticated virtual learning environment. There are many ways in which forums can be used and students group together via these forums. Students use this space for more than just keeping in touch. Activities are built into the fabric of the program, including the practice learning activities and online materials. These prompt students to share their responses with their peer groups. Next slide, please. There's an, there is a professional expectation, and this is an example of a science one, that, um, that our students are engaging with these forum discussions. It allows them to challenge, reflect, and debate with each other, and provides formative feedback opportunities within their own community of practice. These social interactions with each, other, with each contributor help student teachers make sense of their learning and results in better outcomes than working in isolation. The collaborative approach to learning fosters inquiry and meaningful reflection, which are critical for reflective ed teacher education to be intellectually challenging, as noticed, noted by Welsh Government, Furlong and Livingston and Sage. Next slide, please. Each of the bridging strategies we've considered today rely on the expertise of practitioners across the partnership, including mentors, school coordinators, university curriculum tutors, and the students themselves. Each structure offers a flexibility to enable students to succeed no matter where on the continuum of professional learning they begin. So even student teachers who may exceed expectation in relation to QTS earlier on in the programme still have the structures they need to give them the freedom and, auto and autonomy to extend their practice. Mentors support student teachers to develop their knowledge for practice and of practice by mediating the practice learning activities conducting regular observations of teaching and co-constructing knowledge, providing the day-to-day -day support in the school context. The curriculum tutors enrich the students' knowledge for practice and facilitate the overarching structure for lesson study, which is then further supported by the mentor in the context of knowledge in and of practice. Peer interaction via forums and seminars also supports student teachers to develop their knowledge in and of practice by affording students a professional space to reflect upon their practice and to use the experience of others' reflections to inform their own. Ensuring that the student teachers are aware of the importance of theory, how it informs their practice and the links between the two is always at the heart. The reason for this is that we understand that student teachers might not always show an awareness of this as they begin their teaching journey, and our professional contributors aid them to develop this knowledge over time. Each member of the partnership supports the student teacher to develop their knowledge according to the expertise that each brings. This demonstrates the importance of having clearly delineated roles and responsibilities so that each expert is clear about the purpose and nature of their role in the student teacher's developing construct of their teaching identity. This model also outlines the importance of placing the student at the centre of a community of practice and creating channels to transmit knowledge from theory to practice and vice versa. Today's focus on the integration of theory and practice is a key element of all new IT partnership approaches to supporting the development of tomorrow's teachers. To thrive in the new reformed landscape of education in Wales, aspiring teachers need to be ready to articulate and apply their own theories of practice within the context of their own schools and learners. The three elements which we presented today are just three of the puzzle pieces in a much bigger jigsaw of the student teacher's experience, which we hope supports them to develop an understanding of knowledge in, knowledge of, and knowledge for practice to grow their own personal teaching constructs. However, we also stress that this is just the start of a lifelong journey of reflective and reflexive practices, which will enable the student teacher to continue to refine and develop their practice throughout their careers. I will now hand back to my colleague Anna for uh, feedback and closing remarks. Thank you very much. Wow, to all our colleagues from the OU, Athrova and the Cardiff Partnership. I guess what we've heard today is how the principles of integration, and they're including the equal knowledge, professional identity, we heard a lot about safe space, to, to explore things, evaluation, reflection, and that notion of clarity of roles and responsibilities and how these play out in our illustrative examples. From the Cardiff Partnership, we've heard around school-led training days and research champions and how they support the integration of knowledge. And equally, how some of these challenges and what's been done around these challenges to help move IT reform forward. 
from a thrower, we've heard in the integration of knowledge and through the bridging and how the concept of meet, test, share, the research disp dispositions and critical evaluation of bridging is helping them move forward in this IT reform. And finally, then we've heard from the OU partnership on how they model and enacting their model through illustrative examples. We've heard how practice learning activities, lesson study and forum helps them with this concept of bridging and integration of knowledge between university knowledge and school knowledge. And essentially, I think from today, importantly, we should ask the question, what can we therefore take from this today in order to inform our learning? So as I think we've got a couple of minutes just for questions, but as we're perhaps having those questions, we'd like you also in the chat function to answer the following. What have you really learned from today? And what is your one take home message? And can you really provide us with one bit of feedback in the comment function? So I'll leave those two remarks there and questions and we'd really encourage you um, to use that chat function if possible. Diolch yn fawr iawn i chi gyd. Over to John. <laughs>